Hey guys, and welcome back to another Design Together workshop. I'm Ahmed, and in this video, I will be talking to you about components in Figma. So components are reusable pieces of UI, and if you're familiar with Sketch, they're exactly like symbols. By creating a component, you can go to your left side panel, to the Assets tab, and simply drag and drop your component onto the canvas, which gives you complete control over your design system. So in this video, we're going to be taking the header notification frame that we created previously and turning that into a reusable component. So let's get started. So this is the header notification that we created in a previous video. We just have a frame called header notification. That frame has a blue uh, color applied to it. And inside that frame, we have a text element with constraints center, center set to them. So we want to add a close icon to give the user the ability to dismiss this notification or close this notification. So we need to add icons into our design system. So I'm going to create a new page and I'm gonna call this page Atomic Elements. And it's very common to see designers refer to their lower level elements like spacing, color, and text, or icons as atomic elements. They're your lowest level patterns. So in this page, we're going to add our icons. And I'm using a plugin called Material Design Icons. And you can just go to the dashboard, go to plugins, and you'll see it's one of the popular ones. Just download it and you can start using it. So I'm gonna go over to my plugin. I'm going to search for a close icon that I can add to my header notification frame. And I'm going to add another icon here just for demonstration purposes. I'm just gonna pick anyone, doesn't really matter. <laughs> okay, so now we have two icons on our cam. But notice if you go to the assets tab, it's still empty. You don't have any components created yet. We still need to turn these icons into components. So to do that, I'm going to select the frame and then I'm going to go to the top toolbar and click create component. And now if you go to the Assets tab, you'll notice that you have a component. I'm going to do the same thing for my account balance icon. I'm going to click Create Component. And now we have two components in our Assets tab. You can just drag and drop these components to place them anywhere on your canvas and you can grab as many as you want. Now notice if I were to edit the style of my master components, let's say if I were to change my master components color to red, it's going to affect all instances in my design. You can also change a specific instance without affecting the master component. So if I were to select an instance of this master component, and you'll notice in the left side panel, the master component almost has these filled out purple dots, and the instances are just this blank rotated square sort of. So if you change the color of the instance to let's say black, it's only going to affect that specific instance. It's not going to affect the master component and it's not going to affect any other instances of that master component. So you can change and edit styles of the master component and this will reflect those changes globally in any instances in your file. And you can also change a specific instance and that will only apply those changes to that instance. It won't affect anything else in your designs. So let's delete these for now and let's go back to our example. So to make things a little bit cleaner, I'm just going to select both my icons and I'm going to hit Option Command G and I'm gonna name them icons. Now, if you go to your assets tab, you'll notice that both icons now are living in this icons file or icons tab. And this makes things a little bit more organized, especially if you're working with a lot of components and a big design system. Let's go back to our desktop frame where we have this header notification. So I want to add my X icon next to my close icon next to my text element. And I'm going to center it to its parent frame, which is the header notification frame. So now it's centered. I want it to have 32 pixel padding between my text element and the icon. And then I'm going to place both my text element and the icon inside of the frame. So Option Command G. I'm gonna call this frame notification, I can't, notification content. And I'm going to center it inside my parent frame of the header notification. So I always want to maintain this 32 pixel padding. So to do that, I'm gonna apply auto layout to my notification content frame. So I'm gonna to go to the right, click auto layout, and you see that 32 is now applied. So no matter what happens to the frame, 
there's always going to be 32 pixel padding between my text element and the icon. I wanna do the same thing for my notification content frame. We have 16 top and bottom padding between the notification content and the header notification, and I always want to maintain that. Notice that if I were to break this text into two lines right now, my padding isn't maintained. Now I have 16 on the top and two on the bottom. So I always want to maintain 16 at the top and bottom. So to do that, I'm going to apply auto layout to the notification contents parent frame, which is this header notification. So when we go to the right, click auto layout and automatically detected that 16. So now if you were to break this text element into two lines, you'll notice that this notification content frame still has 16 top and bottom padding. I'm gonna increase the size of my frame to fit the desktop. And that's perfect. Now I also want to change the color of the icon to be white, but to do that, I'm going to first create a shared style for white. So I'm going to select my text element because it's already using white. I'm gonna go to my four dots, create style. I'm gonna call that white. So I'm going to select my icon and then I'm going to change the color and select a white shared style. So now both the text element and the icon are using the white shared style. So if you were to change this white shared style at any time, it's going to change both your icon and text element. Great. Some of you might be wondering why we didn't just place the icons directly from the material design plugin into our header notification component. And that's because by turning the icons into components first, we're actually able to switch between them in our header notification component. So if you go to the right side panel and go to where it says instance, you'll see this close icon and you can switch between the close and the account balance very easily. You just have to edit the style of that instance because this isn't the master component. This is just an instance of the master component. So we need to edit that instance to match the style that we want. So very easily, I was able to change the close icon to my account balance icon with very minimal effort. So now all that's left is to turn this frame into a component. So I'm going to move my header notification frame into my atomic elements page. So I'm gonna click Command X to cut. And I'm gonna click Command V to paste it in my atomic elements page. And then I'm gonna to go to the top toolbar and click create component. So now if you were to go to the assets tab, you'll notice that you have your icons and you also have this header notification component. So let's go back to our desktop frame and let's add a iPad frame next to it. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna click F on the keyboard, select the iPad frame. And then I'm going to go to my assets tab and just drag and drop this header notification frame inside my viewport frames. So I'm gonna drag and drop it into my iPad frame, align it to the center and top. And because we're using constraints and auto layout, we can easily resize this frame and it looks just as we would expect it. Everything looks good. Great, so now we have a reusable header notification component. Make sure to check out the next video where we will be creating a header navigation component.